you know what? With no further ado, man, I, I'm just going to bring, Rod Digger should be here any second, man, but I want to bring the brother in, the prince of Pan-Africanism, our brother, Dr. Umar Johnson. Let's welcome him to the Godcast, y'all. Peace and black power. Peace and black power. Glad to be with you, brother. Peace and black power, my brother. How are you? All is well. All is well. That's great. That's great. That's great. How you be on this on this glorious day? Everything's good. Everything's good. Moving steadily. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we glad to have you here on, on, on the Godcast. Build with us. You know what I mean? Um for those of for those that might be under a rock and doesn't know who Dr. Umar is, why don't you give people a brief um, you know, a brief bio of yourself, brother? Uh sure. Um I'm a doctor of clinical psychology, a certified school psychologist, which is what I'm most known for professionally, mm. a certified school principal, a former child therapist, family therapist, which I still do occasionally for different agencies. Um, author of the book, Psychoacademic Holocaust, The Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys. Uh, my second book, my newest book, which is only about two weeks old, is Black Parent Advocate, right, The Art of War for Dealing with well. America's Public and Charter Schools, which we will be releasing in Harlem the last Friday of the month, October the 30th. And is that at the law school? Eight. Uh, yes, sir. A law mm -hmm, school in mm -hmm. Mecca, 2122. 7th Avenue. Clayton Powell. Mm -hmm. A shout out to the guys in Earth for allowing me to have my book released in Harlem. I wanted to come back to Harlem because it's my 10 year anniversary. I first spoke in New York City on October the 30th of 2010. So October the 30th of 2020 is exactly the 10 years. And I spoke at the National Black Theater. 125th and 5th so i wanted to keep it in harlem so i'm very thankful to the guys and earth for letting me do it there um in addition to that a uh, blood relative kinsman four times great grand cousin to frederick douglas uh, bishop wayman mm. of the ame church is also a, a distant uncle um and currently we're in the process of building now is that on your mother's side or father's side both on the father's side okay um in addition to that, we're in the process of building a Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, Wilmington, Delaware. We purchased four buildings February of 2019, one week before Frederick Douglass's 201st birthday. And we're in the process of getting the smaller school, which is the Honorable Marcus Garvey building. We're trying to get that ready by the new year. Renovations have begun. The roof has been repaired. We're working on the plumbing, the electric, the HVAC now. God willing, keeping our fingers crossed, we'll have that building ready to go by the new year. Uh, we're a little short on the cash, so we're asking brothers and sisters to keep on donating. Please, please get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG School. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy, or mail in your donation to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, one nine eight zero nine former minister of education marcus garvey's unia founder of the national independent black parent association education and mental health is what i do along with the greater goal of international liberation for all african people as a pan-africanist okay well let, let's let's get into a little bit you you're from philly yes born and raised still born here and raised. so how does a young kid from philly become a you know a doctor a clinical psychologist a child psychologist and all that Wait, you know that doesn't seem like the normal path for your average kid from philly true um what led you well, down that road two institutions that played a very large role in my life are only about five blocks from each other and one is the George G. Meade Elementary School, where I received my black history instruction during the fourth and the fifth grade. And about five blocks away from that is the International Headquarters Division 121 of the Marcus Garvey Movement, the UNIA ACL. 
Mm. So public speaking began for me at Mead Elementary and it transcended a few blocks away once I joined the UNIA after I graduated from Millersville University when I came out of undergrad. But specifically speaking to becoming a psychologist, I've always wanted to be that. Since I was a third grader, I wanted to help children. Um, Why? I'm, because I'm the oldest boy of mm -hmm. my mother's children and I didn't have a big brother. So, and so am I. I. I decided I wanted to be the big brother for all the children who would need one hmm. as they grew up. Hmm. Now, that's interesting because I can kind of relate as being a big brother. You know, you, you're the one that, you know, you're the pioneer for a lot of knowledge, I guess. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're the one that ends up teaching the ones under you. So that does end up becoming sometimes a... Uh, just a natural fit for um for yeah for an older brother so yeah that's interesting yeah. oh so so you said the school had to do with pan africanism as well well yes? the school was black history okay the school was black history um i always say i was a pan africanist before i knew what pan africanism was because the red black and green flag just always naturally vibrated with me even before joining the UNIA and gr I grew up right around the corner. I grew up, I would say the most significant childhood home where I lived, where I was from fourth grade until my junior year of college. It, walking is probably one, two, three, it's literally about six blocks away from the UNIA, but I never knew it was there. I did not learn about the UNIA being where it was until I graduated from undergrad in 1997. So ironically, my mother bought all of my sneakers for school and for play right next door to the UNIA. Hmm. So my whole life, we were going right next door to the Garvey movement, and I never knew it until I came out of college. Now, for those who might know, what is Pan-Africanism? Pan-Africanism. The concept of Pan-Africanism. To sum it up in four principles, and Garveyism is simply the highest stage of Pan-Africanism. Um, the first principle, all African people are one family. We believe in one race, one family, one people. So whether you in New York speak in English, whether you in South Africa speak in Zulu, whether you in Brazil speak in Portuguese, whether you in Haiti speak in French, wherever you are on this earth, if you descend from the original man and woman that the creator put on African soil, then you are members of that original African family. And more importantly, we identify as being African family first. So that means that you're never a Christian who happens to be African. You're never a Muslim who happens to be African. You are African who happens to be a Muslim. You are African who happens to be Christian. Nothing supersedes your racial family identity. So, so the religion isn't first, the profession isn't first, your gang, your clique, your organization, your frat, nothing comes before the race. The race is the essential human family, and that's what we identify as first. So Pan-Africanism would say that that all black people are out of Africa. What do you say to some to people that say black people are the original people of of the planet Earth, and and we're not isolate isolated to just coming out of Africa? What do you say to that? Well, I don't think those two statements are mutually exclusive in that we are the original people of the earth and we are the original people of every continent. Here is our but your Roger origin, just joined us. the origin and the beginning of mankind <laughs> is the mother continent. And anyone who would dispute that, let's just go to the artifacts because anything sounds good when it's in theory. Anything sounds good when it's in philosophy. People can say, I was already in America. I was already over here. Okay, prove it with the artifacts. There is no artifact of a man or woman, modern man or woman that is older than any of the artifacts found on the mother continent. 
So when we deal with it anthropologically, historically, culturally, we can just go to the artifacts. When you go to the artifacts, the argument is dead. When you go to the, it genetically, the argument is dead. All here's the thing, time. though. Who's giving us this information? Who's giving us these artifacts? Who's giving us this um, so-called DNA? You know, this... Um, you know who they say was the, the you know the 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 bones and all that Sally right. or whatever their names are like like mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff you know honestly if you trace it back it kind of traces itself to darwinism the out of africa theory saying that you know evolution and that that black people we came from monkeys and all of this type of nonsense and that all people came from africa because we were basically the more um, undeveloped people. And see, this is a way for white people to try to act like they are an improvement upon evolution. And, you know, there's a lot of people that say that they, they were some of the first ones to come with this, um, and with this, with this theory, with this out of Africa theory. What do you, what do you feel okay. about that? Well, the out of Africa theory is not synonymous with Darwinism or the theory of evolution, okay? As Pan-Africanists or any African scientists, we reject the notion that we came from monkeys. We flat out reject that, Facts. okay? We also reject the notion that the African is a primitive version of the European. We reject that as well. Facts. Our research is not coming from Europeans. Our research is coming from Africans. In fact, one of the modern fathers of Pan-Africanism, His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I, his grandson is one of the leading anthropological and genetic scientists on the African continent. And he is actually responsible for discovering some of the oldest fossils of modern man on the continent. In fact, His Majesty's grandson unearthed African fossils that are older than the Danganesh fossil that was found in Ethiopia called Lucy by the Europeans, who was two million years old. His Majesty's grandson, Dr. Selassie, found the remains of ancestors that were eight, 10, 12 million years old, much older than that of the so-called Lucy or the Danganesh. And then there were other African scientists, even more recently in West Africa and even in Central Africa, who found bones, the, the remains of Africans that can even challenge, okay, the latest dated fossils that Dr. Selassie has found. So this none of this science is coming from white people. This is all coming from Africans. We were first. And as I say, go to, go to the artifacts. Right. I'm I, dealing I, with, we, sometimes you have to deal in theory. Sometimes you have to deal in theory because you're short on evidence. We're not short on evidence when you're dealing with the origin of man. Go to the artifacts. Absolutely. Um, let's just acknowledge the uh the Queen Rod Digger real quick. Rod Digger queen? in the building. Peace, Peace guys. Queen. Looking um, beautiful. I apologize you know. for being late. I, I was actually double booked. I uh just got finished doing something with uh the brother Muta Ali that directed the the Yusef Hawkins documentary for HBO and and he was actually a guest on our Godcast. So it was it was nice to talk to him after the the documentary oh, has that's been right. released. Muta Ali. That's yes, right. yes, 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 our brother. Yes, yes. Sir. I, I was just uh doing something with, with him on a Zoom and I was just curious to know like what were some of the um the after effects. I mean, most notably uh it came to like that Patty Duke who was, uh, you know, was yeah, his a punk ass was working <laughs> at High 97 the whole time. And he was one of the killers of Yusef Hawkins. And they was harboring this fugitive ass up there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You so, heard about that, brother? Yes, I did. Somewhat. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. That was some nonsense. But peace to you. I'm I'm so uh, happy to have you. Uh, we're here. You're here with us to this evening. I was like, I gotta hurry up and, and get on my show now. Oh, the honor is mine, Queen. We actually have a little bit of a uh, history that you don't even know about. When oh, I was, uh, uh oh, <laughs> no, it's positive. It's positive. Nah, positive. When I was at Millersville University, um, after I graduated from undergrad, I was Black Student Union and undergrad, Black Student Union president in undergrad, but I came back for graduate school and we started an NAACP college chapter 
And the spring that I would graduate with my master's in school psychology, we were having a spring concert for the NAACP. I was the, since I was a graduate student, I was the graduate advisor to the NAACP chapter at Millersville University. And you were supposed to be one of our performers. This is the Dirty Harriet album. Okay. And I was in contact with your road manager at the time. Can't remember the name, of course, this is 20 years ago. Um, but we were we were we were we were advertising Rod Digger. Everybody was looking forward to seeing Rod Digger. And I got in touch with your road manager about a week before the show date. It was like late April, early May, right before the school year ended. And she said, I'm sorry, it was a she or he, I think it was a she. And she said, I'm sorry we had Rod Digger already booked for another event. I said, but we had the contracts and everything. See, she up. been double booking. She it been was, double uh, booking. Been double booking right? Oh, you wow. Booking. With your double booking you ass. Double booked yourself right with, your loud, with your loud throat. First of all, turn your throat down. Shut turn up. Your throat down. <laughs> Shut up. Because everybody's yeah. saying, it, you, for real, your throat's a little loud right now. Turn your throat yeah. down and stop <laughs> double booking, okay? Yeah, you've been double booking for mm -hmm. about a generation. <laughs> My bad. But, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't come. Oh man! Yeah, you didn't come because she had you on another calendar, and I think somebody we signed the contracts. We sent them back. I think she had the contract, but it may have just been an oversight on her side. Maybe something that you know just kind of fell out of consciousness for. Wait, 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 wait. So, 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 did y'all send the deposit? No, as universities, universities don't usually send deposits. Oh right, you get have a right. Of you, well, some of them. The, if we can get you to send it. If we can get you to do it, you'll do it. But most of the time, they're like, "No, our money's yeah, good. Gonna do it. We're gonna you pay you the whole thing at the end. We're gonna yes, make sir. sure you don't do nothing stupid." Yes, sir. And and if everything goes well, and so we would be like, "I right. like exactly. that." Those university exactly. checks, those shits was always good money. So you never, oh, you know I'm I mean? sorry, you never complained about that. Exactly. And you got to remember, we were at a PWI, predominantly white university, so they were not necessarily. Uh, supportive of us having a hip hop concert anyway, and what anyway. was this university? So they were not going to let us uh, do a deposit at mm -hmm. all, right? Uh, to know black a few people. Years before that, we had when I was president of the Black Student Union, May of seven, 1997, we had Jay Z and KRS One. Right. That's how I graduated out of undergrad, and I was going to graduate out of grad school with Rod Digger. Until they mess the contracts. <laughs> oh, I feel bad. That's all now, right. That's now, all if right. you would have had Bing Crosby, they would have gave him a deposit, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. let me ask you something. Why don't you tell the people about the 11 laws of white supremacy? The 11 laws of white supremacy. The three are the most important. Uh, rule number one. And I guess it's the rule that most people find most controversial. And that is that all white people are racist. And when you say that all white people are racist, a lot of black people look at you crazy. A lot of white people look at you crazy. But I like to explain exactly what I mean by that. Racism is a group system that is, that is created and implemented by an entire group. Everybody participates. Facts. And that system is designed to disadvantage all members of another group. All of them are affected by racism. In other words, whether you're Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Jay-Z, Bob Johnson, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Minister Farrakhan, racism affects all Black people, irregardless of education, status, class, or wealth. Well, if it impacts all black people, regardless of who they are, then it must also benefit all white people, regardless of who they are. And so white people will argue that I'm not a racist. My ancestors didn't own slaves. I've never done anything to black people. So, OK, although I would probably debate the authenticity of that claim, but let's assume it's true for the sake of conversation. You are not guilty of committing any crime against black people but you are nonetheless guilty of omission which means you didn't commit a crime but you did not stop none either in other words you may not have participated in police genocide but you turn a blind eye to it you may not be miseducating black children but you will turn a blind eye to it 
And furthermore, by virtue of police genocide, by virtue of miseducation, by virtue of mass incarceration, by virtue of gentrification, you receive privileges as a white person that are directly attributable to the disadvantages that are imposed upon blacks. So all white folk benefit from the oppression of black people directly and indirectly, and they all contribute to the maintenance of the system of white supremacy, directly or indirectly. There's no such thing as a white person who's innocent of racism. Uh, Big facts. Uh, bars. <laughs> Digger, you got any questions? Um, I have a question about... Um, like now the times that we're in and, and with everyone with senses being so heightened and, and just racial tensions, I mean, they've always been, you know, they've always been present, but now they're, you know, they're super heightened and so many different leaders in our community uh, stepping up and, and taking charge and, and doing their part. And I do see uh, something that is very disturbing and, and even heartbreaking to me, just a lot of division mm -hmm. with the black leaders of our community. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wish I could just go around to everyone and say, hey, shut up, white people can hear you. But, you know, this is not the case. Um, how, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, I, I know you've had situations with other brothers and stuff, and mm -hmm. we don't have to get into all of that, but mm -hmm. how does, do you feel, like, do you feel compelled to just sometimes step back and say, you know what, we're, we need to focus on a real enemy? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. And that's a very good question. And it's a loaded question. I'm going to unpack it a little bit. <laughs> uh, you mentioned leaders. And I would challenge all of us to be a little bit more specific with the titles that we give people. We have a lot of spokespersons in the black community. I wouldn't say we have a lot of leaders. We have a lot, and on, on the mainstream level, we have a lot of national black leaders who are not leading us anywhere. They're not leaders, they're spokespersons. They represent a particular reality, but they don't necessarily have a plan nor do they have anything implemented to advance black people from where they are to where they wanna be. I'm not talking about the speeches. I'm not talking about the plans on paper, but I mean, you are actually moving us or a contingency of us from point A to point B. We don't have a lot of that. We have spokespersons. And on the mainstream level, Queen, when we deal with the Congressional Black Caucus, when we deal with the National Urban League, when we deal with the NAACP, when we deal with the Black clergy, you're dealing with not leaders or really spokespersons. You are dealing with power brokers whose job is to broker deals between the Black underclass and the white overclass. So they don't really change or transform anything for the black community. They simply broker deals. In other words, they bring us crumbs in exchange for concessions that are far more valuable than the crumbs that we were given. I'll give you an example. Right now, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, the black celebrity class, black clergy, black businessmen, they're brokering a deal right now for the Democratic Party to get as many black people out as possible to vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. That's what I mean by brokering deals. You haven't asked them to do anything about the schools. You haven't asked them to do anything about the criminal injustice laws. You haven't asked them to do anything about the economic castration and disadvantages of black people. You haven't touched genocide or gentrification or any of that. You're simply getting black people out to vote for no platform or agenda whatsoever in exchange for some crumbs that will come to you by virtue of serving the agenda of the Democratic Party. That's what I mean, black spokespersons or, or, or black power brokers, negotiators posing as leaders. Mm. Okay. Back 
And for the record, and this is my Marcus Garvey bias, this is my Pan-African nationalist bias, for me, you cannot be a leader if you're not economically and politically independent. If you work for white people, you cannot be a genuine leader for black people. Now that sounds like common sense because a man cannot serve two masters, right? So you can't work for the European, but claim to be about the business of liberating the African. But if you write down your top 10, 20 most popular black leaders in America, all but maybe one or two are economically dependent on a European power structure, which is exactly why Lord Jamal and Sister Rod Digger, celebrities, most celebrities cannot be leaders of black America. Mm. You two might can be, because from what I understand, you're somewhat, somewhat removed from that entertainment empire. But for most of our most successful black entertainers, film, music, acting, it doesn't make a difference. They're too economically tied into the white entertainment superstructure to lead black people anywhere. And many of them are not even good spokespersons because they're too far removed from the ghettos to really understand what's going on in them now, even though they were raised in them. And most of them are too afraid to be castigated by the white power structure to speak honestly about black people. So I cringe when they ask comedians what's going on with black America. I cringe when they go to the NFL and the NBA and go to the gangster rap community and ask them what does black America need? Because whenever they put the microphone in a hip hop artist's mouth, they start cooning as bad as a Charles Barkley or Shaquille O'Neal. I don't care how gangster they are off the film put the microphone in their face and they turn into Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal. Mm. Um, have you been to Africa, brother? Multiple times. In fact, this was the first summer that I missed Africa this past 20, uh, 20 summer because of the COVID. We normally take a group every year. Uh, I've been to every coast. I think I'm up to about 15 countries now. And I want to touch every single country before I go back to the ancestors. Why do you think someone like Marcus Garvey, who preached um, going back to Africa, never stepped foot in Africa? What he was, was that banned. all about? <laughs> huh? He was banned from Africa. Was he? Of course. The colonial really? powers wouldn't dare let Marcus Garvey get into Africa. He in nay country? Not nay? Nowhere? There, well, remember now, you're talking the 1920s. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. whole of Africa was colonized by the European. There was no country except Ethiopia and Liberia that could be considered independent. Right. And at that time, Mr. Garvey and his majesty had some differences that they later worked out on the Ethiopian side. And on the Liberian side, for those who are familiar with Garvey's history, Marcus Garvey was on his way to Liberia. He sent Pan-Africanists to Liberia with equipment, money, materials to begin building what that international community for repatriates around the diaspora who wanted to go home but garvey was banned even from liberia which was the only free nation at that time other than ethiopia nobody would let not only was garvey banned garvey's newspaper was banned the negro world was banned outright in every colony on the on african soil if they caught you with a copy of the marcus garvey newspaper that could cost you your life, either in prison or literally. Wow. Mm. That's the only reason why Garvey never set foot on the continent. He was not allowed to. Interesting. Yeah, for a lot of y'all who don't know, um, you know, um, Liberia was like a place that was basically colonized by what, ex-slaves, brother? Um, no, 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 it was the American Colonization Society Okay, talk to him. That initially colonized it, but then they sent ex-slaves over, formerly enslaved Africans over to build a community for themselves who wanted to go back home. The problem though, psychologically, we took the consciousness of the slave master with us back to Africa, which led to a very long, very comprehensive civil war between the returning African from America and the indigenous African in Liberia. And that split still exists to this very day in Liberia where I have been 
to the point where if you have an English last name in Liberia, so I'm Ifa Tunde, but formerly Johnson, if I go to Liberia with Umar Johnson, there's going to be a certain privilege attached to my last name because it suggests that I am an American Liberian. I am mm. an American Liberian, meaning one of the descendants of those who came back from America. That schism is still alive in Liberia today, which is why, although I am a Pan-Africanist and I am a repatriationist, we have to be careful with regard to who we take back to Africa. I don't want every Negro in America going back to Africa, nor did Garvey preach that. That is another misunderstanding about the Garvey movement. Garvey never said all Africans should go back home. In fact, he said, quote, some of you are no good right here in America and will hmm. likewise be no good in Africa. No Pan-Africanist ever wanted to take every black person back to Africa. By the way, there was never a back to Africa movement. That is what the white media labeled the Marcus Garvey repatriation program and Liberia program. The white media called it back to Africa. Garvey never had anything called a back to Africa movement. You know, um, what you said about like not having all black people go back to Africa, you know, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, some people have accused you of being hard on black people saying that, you know, uh, some of us is going to have to get taken out. Some of the savages is going to have to get taken out, maybe 10 percent and all of that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. How, uh, how do you address those? Right, how, well, let's speak on it. How do, how do you address those people? Uh, what well, do you mean one, by that? Well, number one, I don't live in the prison of other people's opinions, although I do address their opinions, but I don't live in the prison of their opinions. I believe I became who I am and I believe I've gotten to where I am because most of our people, and when I say our people, I don't just mean domestic North America. I mean the entire planet. My following is global. So I believe most of our people depend on me to tell the truth, whether they agree with me or not. He's going to tell us what he feels in his heart. Unapologetically African. I live my life on that. I'm the same black man, whether I'm on the Lord Jamal Rod Digger show, the Godcast. I'm the same black man. If I'm on the Breakfast Club, I'm the same black man. If I'm with that coon Roland Martin, I'm the same black man wherever <laughs> I'm at. You understand? I don't shift for nobody. I'm the same black man in the courtroom, public school, wherever you take me. I do not change my colors ever. And I never will. With that being said, coming from a psychological perspective, you are out of your mind. Any of us are. If we think you're going to save every African in the United States of America, our people, some of them are so far gone that there's nothing you can do for them except leave them to be. And some of them will try to take your life before you can resurrect their consciousness. I don't ascribe to any utopian theory that says we're going to save all 50 million blacks in America. That would be ridiculous. You have to go fishing for those who you can save. I'm trained in, in psychology. So when we do therapy, the first thing we're taught to do from the gate, Sister Ra and Brother Jamal, mm -hmm. first thing we do is determine if you can reach this person or not. Is this person ready to change? If they're not ready to change, you know what we tell them? When you're ready to stop smoking, when you're ready to stop drinking, when you're ready to stop letting men abuse you, when you're ready to stop being intimidated by your employer, when you're ready to stop feeling sorry for yourself, then you come back to therapy. But I am not going to take your money because that would be exploitation when I know you are not ready to do anything to change yourself. And that's how we must be with our people. Those who want it, Let's give it to them. But for those who don't want it, there's nothing you can do with them except leave them be. You know, I happen to <clears throat> I happen to agree with you on this topic right here. Um, you're not we're not going to be able to save everybody like it is naive to think that every single um, black person is going to, you know, come come into the knowledge of themselves and and. Yes, there are some that are going to battle you like like it's going to be your life or their life type of situation. And 
I don't think it's unreasonable to um to state that fact really. I think I think on that point I think people are just trying to like Oh, you see what he said? He's supposed to be about <laughs> black people, but then exactly. you know he exactly. uh he's talking about on this case, you know, uh hurting black people. What what, what do you think about that, Digger? What do you think about this? What are we talking about? Are you frozen? Uh, no, oh. no, no. <laughs> oh, I no, I didn't, I didn't realize you were you were coming to me. Um, I think there is a lot of uh, I guess for lack of a better word, propaganda that gets circulated through the media and I feel like it's put there purposely to uh, divide and conquer. I, I feel like thing, you know, sound bites and clickbait titles and, and just things are, are taken and, and, and just put, put out here in, in the internet for, for mass consumption. And, and because we're in such reactionary times, um, they create situations that like oftentimes spiral out of control when probably it all could have been fixed with a, a simple conversation, which, you know, which kind of led me to my, my original question with, uh, a lot of the, the turmoil that I see amongst, uh, us, I feel like we're, 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 we're at a point in time now where we, we have, we have white people's attention for the, for the most part. I mean, we're, we're definitely in the same place that we've been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. But I do think there is some bit of difference right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I loud? I, I have, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. I just have a really sorry. loud voice, but, um, I, I, I do feel like we're at a time where if we just could all, and I, I don't know if it's even possible, like you said, I don't know if it's utopian to think it, but if we could just get all on code, maybe right now where we are, we could just like move forward and, and, and smash. But are we, you know, are we too far gone? Are we too far divided? Is it impossible to save Sorry about that, Queen. No, go ahead. What I don't, I don't say, think buddy? we're too far gone, but we got to understand something. There's a lot of black people whose livelihood is tied up in us remaining disorganized and self-hating. I agree. I mean, look at the reality TV show industry. Look at hip hop. I look agree. Gangster rap. Okay. Look, it's big. Most of black community culture today is based on conflict. Gangster rap is totally based on conflict. Reality shows is based on conflict. Social network is based on conflict. Black people don't wake up, a lot of us, looking to find out what's positive going on in the community. We want the drama. We That's want the why it's so easy, as you said, propaganda. That's why it's so easy to spread lies and disinformation about right. people because we want to hear the negative and we want to believe the negative. Take me. I have six degrees, a doctorate in clinical psychology from the oldest osteopathic medical college in America, the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. I believe they're the oldest. The first osteopathic, one. what is what is osteopathic? Osteopathic relates to the manipulation of the skeletal muscular system as a as a solution to whatever presenting medical complaint that you have so no matter what your problem is they're going to look at it within the from the perspective of how your skeletal muscular system may be contributing to that problem and so so so, and, so can you heal words, things they, by they like uh, uh, can you, so 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 let me ask you can um in this can you heal things by like ah uh, like stretching your face or something like that doing facial muscle exercises or something is that <laughs> i probably wouldn't oversimplify it that much but they definitely believe that healing can take place through the effective manipulation of certain aspects of your spine your skeleton and your muscular system hmm. which as we all know comes directly out of 
traditional African culture. Our ancestors did that on the Nile Valley thousands of years ago. So they're just taking a page out of what we do and created a medical modality known as osteopathic medicine, Copy. which is really a branch of traditional African medicine. But with that being said, anybody can pick up a phone and call that college and find out if I graduated from it. It's not a hard one phone call. You get your answer. Did Dr. Umar Johnson graduate from here with a doctorate in clinical psych? You, but guess what? To this very day, people are saying he ain't got no real doctorate. He a fake doc because they want to believe the lie. They're not after the truth, which is why I stopped doing interviews that specifically focused on addressing the hate. Right. Because I had to let interviewers understand this is not because they don't know. It's because they love the negativity. Our coon, the coon community. So you have the coon community within the black community. They never let the truth get in the way of a good story. They never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And so that's why I stopped feeding that because I realized people don't want the truth. They just want to be entertained with negativity. And let me say this quickly mm -hmm. to Sister Rod Digger's uh, question specifically about the conflict within a conscious community. Most of the problems I've had with other brothers, I'm just going to be real, jealousy, envy, and opportunism. When I came onto the scene, October 30th of 2010, it was like it was like lightning. You know, I came in the school psychologist, the Garveyite, with my oratory, my education. Nobody could. It, I was just I was that dude. I was like the notorious B.I.G. kicking in the door. You wanted to say nobody could fuck with me. Nobody could <laughs> fuck with me. I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Nobody could touch me and still uh, can't and still can't. Okay. And that brought jealousy and envy because they're like, this dude is just he talking about. Education, economic, he got the degrees, he got the oratory, he related to Frederick Duck. Like, so then the hates. Now, let me say this though, let me clarify. The first couple years, it was all love. From 2010 to 2014, 15, it was all love because I was speaking for free in the beginning. Okay. And by the way, I never charged for a lecture until 2015. For my, you know, start, I, I didn't start doing my own lectures to 2015, I didn't start charging others until about 2012, 2013, okay? And the only reason why I started to charge is because it started taking me away from my school psychology career and I had to pay the bills. But when I first came out of grad school from 20, 2000, 2000 until 2015, 15 years, I never hosted my own event or charged anybody directly, you see. But from about 12 to 15, I started charging folks who bring me out. But from about 10 to 12, I didn't charge anybody anything. It was literally Umar for free because I was about the work, you see. So with that being said, everything was OK until I started raising money to build the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Mm -hmm. When I started raising money mm -hmm. and when I started putting on my own events, that's when the hate came because those who considered themselves power brokers in the conscious movement felt I had to get their permission. I had to go through them to do certain things. You understand? And they were not able to eat off me. I cut the middleman out. I don't need you to set up events for me anymore. I can do my own event. That's when the hate started. And then when I started collecting money for FDMG, the hate started because other brothers were raising money for their projects and they wasn't able to raise the money I was raising. So that couple with cutting out the middleman, that's what brought the hate to me. It was not ideological. You understand? It was all about either the jealousy or the opportunism. None of it was really based on the work. Okay, so I'm glad. Okay, so now we're here. Let's talk about the school, brother, because sure. that's all that I'm <laughs> getting. That's all that people want to know. <laughs> uh, when people found out I'm... Uh, was going to interview Dr. Umar. Please ask him about the school. We need to know about the school, the school, the school. The school, now, the school, the school. Um, first of all, when did you first get the idea for said school? And from that time, when did you start raising money and, and all that, you know, and... When did it all start? When was the, the genesis of the I had, FDMG school? I had the idea to open a school since I was in college. Okay. 
that idea became more serious when I became an assistant principal. It became even more serious when I became a principal. Mm. It, 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 it was further intensified by being a school psychologist because they're sending me kids to be evaluated for learning disabilities and autism and ADHD and conduct disorder and emotional disturbances and nothing's wrong with these babies. They can learn fine. The only problem is they've never been taught. So the pain and agony of fighting for our children every day, fighting their teachers, some of them black, it wasn't all white people, some of them black, fighting their parents, nothing's wrong with your child. They don't have a learning disability, they have a lazy disability. I want y'all to hear me when I say that. Most of our children in special ed in America do not have a learning disability. They can read if they want to. They can learn how to do math if they want to. They have a lazy disability and nobody's making them do their best. And so all of that professional pain is what drove me to finally taking the steps necessary, Sister Rod, Brother Jamar, to open up my own school. My first donation for the FDMG Mm -hmm. was taken in St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out to St. Louis. The spring of 2014. Shout out to St. Louis. Y'all be, be seeing stuff saying he's been raising money for 10 years. That's a damn lie. The first donation was spring of 14, St. Louis, Missouri. There was brothers and sisters there. It was a jam-packed house. Okay. And we raised that money to pay the attorney to enter a bid in order to try and purchase the St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia, which was a former HBCU built by a close friend of Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver. That was our original goal. <laughs> Raise two million real quick and get the HBCU. We were so this unsuccessful. Is this, and this was six years ago, you said. Yes. That was the spring of 2014. Okay. And we and, and St. Paul's was sold about two or three years later to the Chinese. And okay. that is an insult to our ancestors. We let the Chinese buy an HBCU with all these black millionaires. That's an insult. Oh, the Chinese the Chinese and the Japanese come in and they fucking buy up all kind of shit. Like I remember when the um, the hot records to sample and shit from hip hop. Yeah, they came from Japan and all that, and went to all the record stores in New York and all you know where we and bought up all the records, took them back over there, and now a record that might have cost sixty, seventy dollars over there, I mean mm -hmm. over here, cost like four hundred dollars in their oh, record wow. store over there. Yeah, it's wow. crazy, and people will buy that shit over there. Wow. Um. All right. So you 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 you. So it's been six and a half the money, years now. started getting donations. From what mm -hmm. I understand, you raised about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Well said. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. About twenty months ago, you end up purchasing two buildings. Yes. Four or, buildings. Four buildings. Okay. For about two schools, four buildings. Two schools, four buildings for four hundred thousand dollars it was correct? more than that okay <laughs> well everybody wants to know where's the extra money where'd the extra money go and why is it taking so long to to open this school like like people feel like and I'm not just going to say people found because I'm also going to share a story with you as well. Um, yes, but people feel like, you know, the time that uh, six years is just a very long time to be raising money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to and, and to finally get the, the, the building that you uh, ended up getting that are in disrepair and all of that. And I think it's the transparency that people are looking for. A lot of people are looking for you to be more transparent. And when they don't see this transparency, it makes them feel, you know, skeptical. Okay. Let so, me speak to some of that. Yes, please. Okay. Number one, I'm transparent with my donors. 
I'm transparent. Now I'm donors. I'm being told that 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 there you know people say when your actual donors will ask certain no, sir, things that's they a lie. said that is you not will true. sometimes is block not true. them and all this type of that stuff. That is not true. Those are okay. not donors. Those are haters. My okay. donors have direct access to me. I talk to them. I know who they are. Most of them are repeat donors. My donors range everywhere from black professionals. I have lawyers. I have engineers. I have business owners all the way down to the retired great grandmom who's sending me $10 a month because she want to see this plan come to fruition. Haters don't donate. Donors don't hate. So my accountability is only to those who donate. I want to be very clear about that. It's only to those who donate. So people who ask random questions, they'll never get answers because you don't support this. Now, with that being said, let me also say this. The other question that you ask, which is often asked, is six years, he don't have to school yet. I'm not to blame for that. The community is to blame for that. I cannot manifest the school out of thin air. Schools cost money. They're not houses. They're commercial property. But because we're not used to building things exclusively with black dollars, we don't understand how long does it take to get that done. I'm not a charter school. I'm not a public school. My school isn't going to subsist on white handouts and government funding. My school is grassroots Pan-African Academy. So it'll take as long as it takes until we raise the money to achieve the goal. It is that simple. Why the school ain't up yet? Because we're not raising enough money. But guess who don't have to ask those questions? The owner of Quaker Grits, because Negroes give them $11 million a year. Guess who don't have to ask that question? Nike and Air Jordan, because Negroes give them $4 billion, $2 billion a year. Malt liquor, $4 billion a year. Weave perm and beauty products, $30 billion a year. Uh, fast food, a $1 billion a year. They don't have to ask the Europeans and the Jews and the Chinese and the Arabs. They don't have to ask how long it's going to take them to get that Negro money. We give it freely. But when one of our own steps up with the track record, the experience, the credentials and the resume to do something like build a school to save black boys with the hell that black boys are catching in this country, we don't support them because, number one, we don't want him to get the credit. Number two, we don't want the responsibility of doing for self. And number three, you understand? We want to find an excuse to keep on depending on white folks. So that's really the answer to that. But I want to answer your other piece. You said, what you do with the leftover money? When you open up the interview tonight, I dropped the donation information. I said, get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. I said, get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I said, mail in your checks or money orders, P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. I also said, if you remember, I said, we are running short on the repair money. We don't have it all. We have most of it, but we don't have it all to cover the repairs of the Garvey building. So to me, it is a very common sense question. Something that I don't even think needs to be asked. But somebody say, what are you doing with the leftover money? We're paying for security so people don't vandalize the property like they've already done. You understand? We have to pay for repairs. We have to pay taxes, upkeep, things of that nature. That's what we're doing with the extra money. The electric system has to be repaired. The plumbing system has to be repaired. We just paid for the roofs to be repaired. The carpentry has to be redone. You understand? We have to do the fire alarm system, the sprinkler system. We have to pay for the building permits. There's a lot of expenses. We have to pay for the grass to be cut. That's not cheap. We have to pay for the grounds to be monitored. There's a lot of cost that goes into maintaining two schools, not one, two. And for me, I'm happy because we were only looking to get one school, brother and sister. We ended up with two. And to all those coons and trolls who say the buildings are trash, do you realize the four buildings we got? Our state of the art, art modern schools, they are not old schools like the ones we went to. They are modern. That campus was renovated at a cost of $13 million in 2011, nine years ago. And the only reason why we have to renovate is because the building was not secured by the previous owner, which allowed people to get in and do what? Strip the electric. I was about to say, steal the copper. The <laughs> 
strip the HVAC system. Whenever you and Rod Digger are ready, only you two and your other brother, Godfrey, y'all can drive on down and I will give you a tour. And when you walk through them schools, you tell me if those buildings is trash. First of all, the buildings are in excellent shape. Excellent shape. We just got an offer for one of the buildings over more than a million dollars. That sound like trash to you? Mm. Okay, here's here's where I share a little story, brother um, Umar. So it just so happens <clears throat> that my wife's family has a lot of educators in it. Um, her sister is a, is a principal of a school right now. Her mother was a teacher and her father uh, was and is a principal who actually ended up um, making his own school in East New York, Brooklyn. It's called the Trey Whitfield School. You can look it up. Um, so he's been, he's been doing this since like 1983. And how he started was, he started small. Mm -hmm. He started with three portable trailers that were behind like a church. Nobody was doing anything with them. And he went to the, you know, to the church because he was a principal like you. And he said, you know, I guess he got the same inspiration to start his own thing. So he talked to the people at the church. He ended up <clears throat> negotiating some sort of rent where he had to pay five hundred dollars a month per trailer mm -hmm. um and he had like 280 kids now he didn't have a lot of money he didn't have a lot of donations and stuff like that so what did he do um he said like a lot of schools and stuff yo they would just throw out old desks and books and stuff like that he'd go around to different schools and get desks he'd go to the board of education and um and and they'd give them stuff that they were getting rid of, you know what I mean, that they didn't want, books, whatever, all kind of different supplies. So he was using his resources. He did this till about the year 2000, um, where he then sees like a, a four-story, big-ass building, you know, mm -hmm. something pretty comparable to what, you know, you're talking about. Actually, it might be bigger than, it might be like those buildings combined, the ones that you bought. But this is in Brooklyn in East New York, like right mm -hmm. off Atlantic Avenue. So anyway, he gets to this building. He said he didn't have a dollar for the building, you know, but he goes to the man. He's like, yo, I want to get this building for a school. And um, and the guy's like, um, yeah, well, he tells him whatever. I don't know, whatever the price was. And he was like, listen, I ain't got no money. But what I do have is I got a friend who's... Um, He's like the president of a bank or something like that. And he'll give me a loan, you know, to renovate the, the, the place and all that. And if I miss whatever, any payments or something like that, then y'all will just have a free building renovated. Y'all can, you can take the building back and you'll get the, um, you'll get the shit renovated for free. So he ended up getting in there. Um, and that was in the year 2000, when the year 2020. And this, this school now has gone on. And it's a black school. They don't take no government grants or nothing like that. He does fundraisers and all this. You know, he knows some people in the, in the sports industry and all, you know, because he used to play football back in the days. What's but, the name um, of the school? It's called the Trey Whitfield School. Now, now, I, I, I talked to him. He's he's willing to uh, sit down with you and, 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 you know, give you any tips or anything like that uh, uh, of how he did it. You know what I mean? And how he continues to do it. Um, because this man and he's been on CNBC, all kind of other stuff like that. But 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 the thing is, you know, he doesn't even have the type of um, <laughs> notoriety that you have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and this man was able to make it happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like this man was able to, to just put his thing, you know, into fruition, use his resources. So I don't, maybe we're feeling like, yo, you know, money is the, is, is the answer for everything. But sometimes it's our resources. How about, yo, you know, could you donate your time or something to, 
to help, instead of the money to, to fix something, how about y'all come in and, and, and donate your time to, to help build up the school or something like that? You see, it's not always about money. It's about the people that you know. It's about a lot of different things. Um, you know, okay. for, for, for 700000 I feel like maybe we could have got a piece of land and, and just built from the ground up and it could have been turned mm -hmm. out cheaper. I don't know. We have to look into a lot of things. And, and this is a big undertaking that I feel like, you know, you might need some help with it, brother. What do you think? Well, a couple things. I want to deal with your assumption um, that I might need some help. Okay. Uh, most of my friends are educators. Most of my elders are educators and psychologists. That is my field. So it's kind of interesting with someone who's an expert in something. And I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the detractors who say I can help him with that. This is no, not I think they're talking about the real estate part of it. Not okay. you're an educator, but not a real estate guy. You but see we already saying? have the real estate, so that's not even an issue. No right, more. but did, did we choose the right real estate? Did we I take the money and do right and do the brother. best fiduciary you, thing with the money? You, brother, I just told you that the schools that we got was a thirteen million dollar project nine years ago in excellent shape. We got a steal for that campus. It was a steal. It was the best thing I could have possibly got. I have no regrets. Okay. See, that's when we start feeding into the lies. That's why you got to come see the school, my brother. Absolutely. And the queen, see I'd it love for yourself. Because you have people telling you that the school ain't in good shape. The school is in excellent shape, which is why we're getting offers for it now. It's in excellent shape, brother. The classrooms don't even have to be touched. We just have to fix the electrical system, the HVAC system, and the plumbing system. So I don't need help with the real estate. We were blessed with that campus. You understand? And as far as your brother's school, I support him. That's I'm my father-in-law. My father-in-law. I just, uh, I just uh, looked at the uh, the website. Mm -hmm. Kudos to that brother. Yes, sir. But what I'm doing ain't that. I want to be absolutely clear. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy will be America's first school based off the principles of pan-African nationalism and international economics. That's not what I'm doing, brother. I have a totally different concept from him. You understand? So if I... The concept could be different, but the implementation of how it's put... But I don't put... need his help implementing, brother, because I'm a certified school psychologist with, and a certified school principal who's experienced, who got a whole cadre of educators. So y'all keep making these things. He needs to talk. No, I don't. Y'all don't know who I got. But I got then why, why is somebody, you have all these credentials, then why is this man who we don't know was able to put his school I together in a few months and, and it's taking school. you six years, never, brother? Six years is nothing for a school. I can show you 10 charter schools where the money is coming from the state and it took them almost a decade to get open, brother. You don't open up a school in a year or two. I don't know your brother's story, and I don't care to know it. I don't care to know it. because Why got not, though? Mission. If it could be helpful to you, why Why wouldn't because, you care to know it if it could be helpful own, to you? Brother, I have friends who own schools. Do you understand that? I have friends who own schools. So if I need to talk to someone who owns a school, I already got that. I got what I need. The only thing missing from, missing from my equation is enough funds to complete the task. That's it. That's it. The school is not open yet because I don't have enough funds to do it that way. I'm not going to no bank. Maybe we well, 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 well maybe we need fundraising, um, different brother, fundraising brother. methods. Maybe yes, the people and, that and, we and, go and, to and we have that in place, but what I want you to understand, it takes time to build institutions. I ain't got no problem with where we are. I'm loving where we at. We got our plans done by the engineer. We got our electrician chosen. I'm meeting with my HVAC this weekend. I got my plumber on standby. Roofer did his job. Carpenter lined up. We doing what we need to do on the time frame we doing it in. I don't need no help outside of the team I got, which is filled with experts from the East Coast to the West Coast, brother. Mm. Okay, brother. I mean, the, you know, these are definitely the, the, the answers that people want to know. They want to. I'm not interested in people. I'm interested in donors, brother. Yeah, but but but, but in everybody. order for you to get donors, though, you're going to no, have to sir, satisfy brother. these. No, no. I yes, disagree. brother. And I how are you going to get donors you. if you don't satisfy? If, if, if you know I disagree with you? Listen, listen. If I'm considering to be a donor, 
but uh-huh. I have certain questions uh-huh. that I want answered. Uh-huh. I feel like Can that's I legitimate. Can why? I tell you why that's bullshit? Why? Can I? Can Go I? ahead, please. Respectfully? Respectfully. You've been raising money for six and a half years, brother. If you ain't doing up by now, you ain't donating. And your question don't matter. I'm See, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no. Yes, you bro. can't assume that in the oh, six years, everybody knows what that's you're doing. Wait, hang on. That's hang, a hang on. Let me let me interject here. <laughs> you I ain't think donate by now you ain't going to donate. And that's all right with me. But what if they didn't know about it? What if they're just finding out about it? Hang, hang on. Hang on. Let me let me let me <laughs> let me interject uh, to, to both of you guys points to, to, to you, brother Umar. I think what you know, what for for a lot of people that may be naysayers or or detractors. I don't care about the naysayers. But but listen, hang on, hang on. I, I don't I don't want you to focus on them. But imagine someone who may just be you know who may just be getting acclimated to your situation. Somebody mm-hmm. could just be finding out, you know, or or maybe when they hear about you, they 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 see the propaganda, they see the negative stuff, but mm-hmm. they love the idea. They're in love with the mm-hmm. you know with mm-hmm. the philosophy. Mm-hmm. So then, when they go to research you to try to get more information, you know they're seeing they're 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 not getting. I guess they're not getting the answers they feel like they uh, uh to the questions that they want to ask. But they may possibly want to donate or. You know, I, and I, I'm not refer- I'm, I'm not referring to the people that's just like, oh, what's he doing? I, I'm not referring to those mm-hmm. people. I'm, but, I'm referring to people that are legitimately believing in your cause, but may possibly, you know. Do, 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 I, I agree with you, Queen. But to that, I'll say this quickly. I'm the most accessible black scholar in the world. My cell number is public. My email is public. And guess what? I do get emails from people. Doc, I just learned about you. Boom, boom, boom. Tell me about the school. We just started a loyal donors campaign the other day. And any of your viewers who are interested in signing up, please do. The Loyal Donors Club is for brothers and sisters who want to consistently donate $50 a month for bronze, $100 a month for silver, $250 a month for gold, $500 a month for platinum, and $1,000 a month for diamond. We just started that 48 hours ago. Anybody who wants those links, text my cell number, please. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. They will also be put in a WhatsApp group where they will get all the updates that they want. For those who can't afford to make a consistent donation, they can go to the Cash App, dollar sign FDMG School, or the PayPal, FDMG Academy, or mail in the check or money order. They can text me for the address. It's also on the website. Here's what I would say to that, Sister Ra. They do reach out to me. And they do ask me questions and I answer the questions. Here's what I'm saying. A lot of the questions that are being posed, right? And I understand where brother Jamar coming from because he's just being the vessel to bring it to me. I get it. Okay, I understand that. So we on the square together. But those are coming from haters. You got to understand something. I'm probably the most influential an accomplished black school psychologist in American history. Not probably, I am. I am. If you've got a child in special ed, they've been ADHD, conduct disorder, I'm the person you came to. I've been doing this work for over 20 years. My name is etched in stone. There is no such thing as I just woke up and heard about you. You're going to get some people like that, but most of our people know who I am because I help them save their kids or their children went to my school. I didn't just wake up yesterday. People know who I am. I got the books. I got the articles. I got the resume for that. Absolutely. You understand? So Some people just woke up, though. Everybody no, not. No, 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 no. But listen to me. Even if you're not in the conscious community, you know who I am. I don't belong to the conscious community. I belong to the African race. I'm the most requested black scholar in the world, hands down. That's mainstream. Yeah, but you got to understand how many people are not, don't even like, but they're not know about them. scholars. Like, that's, that's what I mean. Like, are so people, far but, but removed from the. They're not asking the negative questions, Jamar. They're not, the new people are not asking the negative questions. The negative questions are the haters. But, but I'm saying, is it a negative question to just. To want transparency. You see what I'm saying? Bro, to just want to know what's going the, on. Bro, what transparency are you talking about? We raised the money, we bought the schools. What transparency are you talking about? We raised the money, the little bit left is going to repairs. What transparency are you talking about? 
You think I'm gonna put the school bank account on YouTube? Well, you think of course I'm not. The of course bank not. On Twitter? You think I'm gonna put the school bank account on Instagram? You watch your damn mind. I'll I think they, that. I think they I maybe want a, more of a timeline of when it might haters, open bro. or something you like catering that. Catering to the haters, don't. Cater no, to no, the no, haters. no, no. It's not a don't catering get, to the haters. The we have to. Here's what we got. Here's what we got to do, though, brother. No, 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 no. It's not about catering to the hate. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. Okay. We have to make sure we have to we have to vet all of our people, bro. I got you love for you, bro. Everybody, then, then vet them other Negroes in the conscious community who ain't building shit. Vet oh, we're gonna we gonna get My to them all, inside, bro. Oh, uh, uh, Jamar, wait, bro, Jamar, we gonna building? get to them all. Who else is building? Jamar, don't discriminate. <laughs> Listen, somebody building an institution from the grass. Right. Name me somebody. You ain't got none of them. Name me I a mean, YouTuber doing what I'm doing. Any of them conscious dudes. Name one on my level. Name one builder. You crazy. I they can't. can't my sneaks, bro. I can't. They All I can name shit. is my father-in-law. How, How many they kept out of jail, bro? They're not building shit. Right. So, so through the grass. What have they built, bro? Who you know in the conscious movement built an institution? Answer that. Nobody. I'm the only one in my generation doing it. Well, you're building it. You're building it. It's yeah, not built bro. yet, though. It's it not don't built. Be there. Don't you worry about it. You be the first one there. Trust beautiful. me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Listen, listen. There. Let let let's let's move. I want to talk about your book real quick. Let's sure. talk about your book. Um, the the Black Parent Advocate. Yes, sir. That sounds like something pages. that is needed in the Black community. Um, what is the Black Parent Advocate about? It is How a can we advocate for black parents? Book. It is the only book ever. No other black psychologist ever. Only me ever <laughs> wrote a book like that that gives the black parent every answer they need mm. for almost every problem they will run into the public school or the mental health system. Mm. Never been done before. Never been done before. And I will be releasing that in Harlem Friday, October 30th from 2 to 8. A la Temple in Mecca, $50 a copy, 560 pages. And for New York, I'm going to have something a little special. I'm going to get the covers raised since it's a special 10-year anniversary. Oh, for those shit. who can't come to New York, I will be releasing a book in Atlanta November the 19th. If you can't come to Atlanta, I will be releasing the book in Nat Turner Land, Virginia, November the 11th when we honor Nat Turner, 189th anniversary memorial of his execution. And if you can't make it there, my 10 year anniversary in Fort Lauderdale, Florida will be December the 10th. Those are my four 10 year anniversaries. We already had Chicago. Shout out to Chi-Town, September the 18th. That's already passed. Guess what's up? So I got the books. I got the resume. I got the school. So when people pop shit, I'm trying to find who else doing the work. Because all I see is people on YouTube making videos. Not y'all. I'm talking about my detractors and the other people in the conscious community. All they got is videos and DVDs. No institutions, no track record for helping nobody. Intellectual masturbation. It seems like your main detractor is this guy, Lennon Honor. Yes. Um. He's a down low <laughs> brother who preys on teenage boys. Whoa. Whoa. He's married uh, with children, but he's on the down low. He prays on teenage boys, according to information that was released recently. Mm, I don't I, know the man. I never met the man. All he does is make videos about another man, which is me. Right. Which was already I, I, questionable. That was already questionable. But based on information that another brother released, who I don't know either. Okay. He prays on teenage boys. Wow. I mean, you know, he did have a, a, a channel that seemed quite obsessive. You know, um, seemed like every goddamn video was about you. Like I was like, you know, uh, I well, we know why now, don't we? We know why now. Yeah, we know yeah, why now. yeah. Well, hey, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know that guy. <laughs> I just keep seeing his name in, in the in the comments, Lennon. Yeah, Lennon, he pays. Lennon, it, he's unemployed, five kids, a wife. He pays his bill by making Doctor Umar hate videos. Mm. That's how he take care of his family. Hmm. he ain't the only one it's a whole army of them out there but compared to the supporters the detractors are almost irrelevant compared to the supporters the detractors are almost irrelevant but everybody focuses on the negative 
Everybody focuses on the negative. And I think that's the problem with our community because we're always looking at the negative. We could have clearly talked about, wow, you're the only one of your generation that's trying to build an institution. Wow. The people gave you 750,000. You bought two buildings instead of one. Like I could easily flip this into a positive success story, but we have such a negative bias with each other that it's just a shame. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is this is the uh this is a society we live in. Just like you said, conflict drives everything. Yeah, like 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 every every TV program, every movie you've ever ever watched it's about conflict like oh this guy you know he's a drug dealer but he wants to get out that's a conflict right there like you know uh but we talking real life in the black community is conflict based and negativity based absolutely. and we have to change that and that's another reason why the school is going to be so important because we have to transform the way that our children think as frederick Douglass said it's better to raise strong children than to repair broken men and that is the motto of the FDMG Academy, along with the Garvey quote, that without confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. Now, when you open this, is, is this just for boys or is this a, It's going to start out for boys and eventually we may extend it to the Princess Academy. But boys are primary because most educational outcomes for black males in America are far more detrimental than they are for our girls. The girls are catching hell too. Make no mistake, what they do to the boys, they do to the girls. But if you compare the two, it's like night and day. When you look at special ed, it's almost exclusively black male. Dropout, almost exclusively black male. School arrest, juvenile detention, Ritalin, Adderall, concerted metadata, conduct disorder, ODD, it's almost exclusively male. So we're focusing on the boys first because they're the ones who need the intervention the most. Facts. I I remember in high school I was reading that uh what Jawan Jawan's a Jawan's Kajufu. a Kajufu. Mm -hmm. uh conspiracy here to destroy <laughs> black boys Shout one out and to two Jawan's I think Kajufu. I read them all that just really was enthralling to me and I was like damn I'm one of the boys they making a conspiracy against like this is exactly for me like I see the little shit that they did and. Um, I mean, that is definitely to be commended. If we get the school up and running and, and you... Abs absolutely. Man, it is, it is to be First commended because it, it is no about ifs. building. It ain't no ifs. Ain't no ifs with me. Let it me just tell be. you. Let me it just tell be. you. We have a thing in, in, in Five Ascent Nations called Love Hell All Right. In order to have love, you got to go through hell for things to be all right. You see what I'm saying? Like, like you got to go through that fire you got to go through that fire in order to come through the other side purify you see what i'm saying so don't 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 always um look at the fire as a bad thing you understand what i'm saying we all need that purification i sometimes. ain't got no problem with the fire with the bad thing but when you get the same questions 10 years straight that you didn't answer a million times anybody yeah can understand well somebody's well patience but growing weak. now so you're answering it the same stuff you, now you answering it in the right place from the right people and and you know man you got to just let the people decide the people and and nah, hopefully people don't decide you, for me hopefully nah, well, i decide for i mean me. they're gonna decide for themselves and but my but, supporters not no nah. well that's like what i'm I saying said, bro, and, and, and hopefully your supporters haters, bro you catering to the hate no 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 we well, don't let me, let me. the hate i'm just i have to ask I the hard the questions bro. popping up i mean it's all i can handle it well, let me let me let me let me say this with the utmost with the utmost respect. I do believe that you you are getting questioned because this is a wonderful thing. This is a commendable thing. Oh, you know, overall, uh, I would be ec ecstatic to see this come to fruition sooner than later. And I think that is the sentiment of of most people. The you know, on a positive perspective. So, you know, I, I want be sooner until we get the funds, babe. So is there, you, is, there, the funds for that. is there is there is there is coming. there is there like a guesstimate number like if you had to just throw a number out like yo we could at least get like a a small classroom going if we had X Y Z the Honorable Marcus Garvey Building has ten classrooms two bathrooms about four offices 
teacher's lounge, computer room, mechanical room. The whole building going to be operating at the same time. See, let, let me say this. And I don't disagree with you at all, Queen. Uh, but let me say this. I got a serious problem, not with y'all. I got a serious problem with the start small Negroes. Get a class. I'm not doing that because our children deserve better than that. Did you start small when you got that Mercedes? Did you start small when you moved into the white suburb? Did you start small when you spent two billion with Nike? Did you start small when you spent a million at McDonald's? Did you start small when you spent $11 million with Craig and Grits? We don't start small when we go shopping nowhere else. $30 billion on weave and perm. We didn't start small, but when it comes time to save our children, when it comes time to give black boys a new reality, when it comes time to give our black girls a better chance at life, we got to snort, we got to start small and crawl before we walk. But we don't do that with nobody else. We've been putting Jewish kids through college. We've been putting Chinese kids through college. We've been putting Arab kids through college. We've been putting Anglo-Saxon kids through college. But when it comes time to put our kids through a school, let's start with one class. I'm not doing that. The Garvey School will be up and running early 2021. I promise you that. The donations is coming. My donors is pushing. They standing behind me. It's just taking a little bit more time because too much attention goes to the negativity and not the positivity. But we will win. Ancestors have already told me that. Ain't no ifs over here. It's only wins. There you have it. You I ain't starting it. small. The, the school's small enough. Can't get no smaller than that. We are $2 trillion people talking about starting small. $2 trillion. Christmas is coming up. In Philadelphia, we're going to spend $3 billion in Christmas. New York City, y'all the largest black population in the country. Y'all Christmas bill like $12 billion. Are we starting small with Christmas? We starting small with Thanksgiving? Do we start small when we go out to party and club? Do we start small when we get our weaves and perms? Do we start small when we get our trucks? We don't start small with nothing else. But when it comes time to save black kids, we got to crawl before we walk. Not me. Victory is here. Get free or die trying. That's what I'm on. There you have it. Straight from the black man's mouth. Y'all wanted the questions? They were asked. Same he answered them. Same, same, same. <laughs> same he questions. answered them. And, and, and they want to ask me the same questions six more months. I've been dealing with it well, for, for, you for know, five years, man. You know when they're going to stop asking you. No, no, they're going to always ask. They still asking where the school at right now. Right now. Well, when they, no when they see you in there and, and the kids is in there and nah, they laughing and playing and that. all that, that's that. when no, they're no, going to... No, 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 you got me wrong, Lord Jim. I ain't worried about that because I don't care what they think. I, I, I could care less what they say when the school get over. I'm worried about my donors and our babies. That's it. And that's, that's all you, sh it. That's all you should worry school. about, I This suppose. will be the first school in American history that was built with a contribution from every African community in the world. First, mm. our donors, Africa, Europe, Caribbean, first school ever, mm. built with donations from every African community in the world. We good, we good. I just get a little impatient with the same stuff over and over. I hear you, brother, but you gotta, you know, you gotta show patience, brother. Like, brother, like I've been we, patient long enough, got, bro. I know. Same questions. We, we got love again. for you, bro. I ain't gotta but, be patient no more. Yeah, I, I, the same stuff. we've never asked you here before, but you know. But you, I'm sure if you, yeah, if you've seen any interview I've been on, it's the same questions like they've been asked. Like maybe we could get some new ones or something. I'm not knocking you. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, it's well, like, well, 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 well. What would you like to touch on before we go? Like, is there anything that you you would Bro, like? I wish they would ask let, me about let me this say particular this. Here's, topic. Here's my issue with the interview. What do you think about vaccines, brother? No, 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 no. Let me say this, please. Here's my issue with the interview community. Right. I'm the only one of my type. I'm the only one of my type. I'm the only school psychologist in the conscious community. I'm the only one. I'm the only independent revolutionary one in the whole nation. We could have talked about what parents can do to keep their kids out of special ed. We could have talked about what they can do to change behavior. We could talk about what they could do to intervene with suicide. There's so many different positive, progressive topics that we could have covered to really help parents, really help educators, really help our children. And we dedicated so much time 
to the same old played out, worn out ass questions from the haters. That's what bothers me. I'm, it's only one of me, bro. You got a lot of people talking about ancient Kemet. You got a lot of people talking about consciousness. You got a lot of people talking about health. But when it comes to the school psych piece, I'm the alpha and the omega. I just think my time should be better used on these interview platforms feeding our parents and our children as opposed to going through the same old dried up ass questions that they've been asking that's already been answered a million times over. I don't well, think everybody that's asking these questions are haters, though. That yeah. 99% of them is. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, we're we're definitely not here asking you in the spirit of hate. And so I hope I you understand you that at know. all. I would actually I, I would actually like to come visit the facility. Uh, when, when can we do that? Let me know. I'll set it up. OK. That's what's up, brother. Y'all coming alone or don't bring none of them haters with you. Oh no! no. <laughs> you can bring Godfrey, just y'all. Yeah, just, yeah nah, just, we, us. just the crew. Well, listen, brother, we appreciate you sitting down with us and, you know, answering the hard questions. That, that just shows some, you know, your character that you can get through this and, and answer the hard questions without a, it having to get, you know, go I left. I can handle it, bro. Yeah, like, because it. we grow no men at the end like of the me, day, bro. bro. I handle it like Malcolm. They just they questions. Me, whatever you throw, I'm going to They just questions. <laughs> Ain't nobody get hurt by a question. They just questions. Um... Same old question. But, but yeah, bro, I know. I well well, I mean, in in my defense, I asked you for the eleven. Um <laughs> you get, and you only gave me one. I asked <laughs> you for the eleven. <laughs> you only gave me one. Power black folks, third rule, they ruthless. The ends <laughs> justify the means. The Listen, person. where could everybody find you online and, and your uh, social media and all that? Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Umar Johnson, Facebook, Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde, email Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo. Phone eight four 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 Doctor Umar or two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight, where they can find me in Harlem Friday October the thirtieth from two to eight free event outdoors the Mecca Gardens. Okay, we're going to be there twenty one twenty two Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. A law school in Mecca. Law school in Mecca. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we will be in the building. And shout out to the guys and nurse for letting us do this there. No better place we could have done it in. That's what's up, brother. Um, actually, I, I do have one parting question for you. Sure, sure. What is the one big something that you see uh, being a problem with uh, with with young children in, in the public schools? Like, is there something that parents like? Well, uh, uh, pretty much what you just said. Like, is there something that parents could do, or like something that uh, real simple, like? Make sure they eat breakfast, or like, what, like, what is the one, the one simple thing that parents could something. do to support their child's intellectual academic development is to, make them read, is to make them read every day. When your child read, four things happen automatically. Mm. They improve vocabulary without even having to focus on it. They mm. improve their knowledge of facts and information. They improve their speaking ability, and they improve their writing ability. And so where will your child need to be able to speak well, write well, understand general facts and information, as well as improve their vocabulary when they take the state assessments? If you want to improve your child's standardized test scores, all you have to do is make them read more. But the problem in our community, sister, is we're allowing our children to be on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat video games all day this whole quarantine a lot of our children was doing nothing but playing on their phones if it was up to me Facts. all social network would Facts. be shut down if it was up to me all social network would be shut down until you graduate from high school if it was up to me because our children are wasting time on everything except their academic preparation damn i just thought of another question <laughs> i i will keep you here all night um, why did they stop teaching uh script cursive writing in school? I had to teach my daughter that it she was 12 years old in seventh grade, and I realized that she was still printing her name like they did not teach her script in school. I had to go buy the books and teach her cursive myself. Two reasons number one, the teacher's union's job is to make the white teacher's job as easy as possible. Mm. Getting rid of cursive made the teacher's job a whole lot easier. That's, mm. that's one reason. 
The other reason is now so much is done on the computer that once again, the teachers unions influence school districts to drop cursive writing since children will mostly be typing and texting now. As a result of that, literary skill has went out the window and you'll probably never see another great literary work from our people the way you used to see in New York back during the Harlem Renaissance with Carl Claude McKay, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, and other authors like that because they're no longer teaching the, the, the value and the sanctity and the quality of the written word. The literary skill of African youth is not what it used to be because the cursive is gone and because there's less of an emphasis on developing your ability to communicate with the written word. Hmm. Yeah, I was just wondering why that was. I'm yeah. like, wait, what did I miss? I, I'm like, I, because I'm on top of my, I was on top of my child's homework and lessons and things. And I'm like, wait, did I miss something? Why does my kid not know how to write cursive? It's easier for the teachers. It's easier for the children. The ch children don't want to learn it. Teachers don't want to teach it. Teachers unions don't want the school district forcing them. And the excuse is everything is done on a computer now anyway. Right. So now you're going to have a bunch of adults walking around that don't know how to write their own signatures. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when wow. they apply for college, every college wants what? An essay, a personal statement. Why yep. do you want to go? And guess who's going to do horribly on those college essays? Our children, because they can't write. And as someone who's to work in an admissions office, I can tell you that the most important thing in the college application is not the application is not the letters of recommendation, is not the application fee, is not the SAT scores or the LA or the ACT scores. The most important thing that they look for is your writing skill. And the reason why your essay is more important than anything else in your college application packet is because no two states have the same level of academic standard. If Rod Digger is graduating from high school in New Jersey, and Lord Jamal is graduating from high school in New York, and Dr. Umar is graduating from high school in Pennsylvania, and they all got straight A's, how do you know which one of them is the most prepared for your college? Mm. You don't mm. because we don't have national education standard. We only have state education standard. So mm. guess how they're gonna find out which one of us gonna get that scholarship? They're gonna look at Rod Digger's essay, they're going to look at Lord Jamal's essay. They're going to look at Dr. Umar's essay, and they're going to look for the misspelled words. They're going to look for the commas. They're going to look for the run-on sentences. They're going to look for the indentations. And that's how they're going to determine which one of us had the best education, because the best estimate of educational quality is one's writing ability. Dude. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Well, listen, well there's bro. something informative. Absolutely. <laughs> I um, love y'all family. I, yeah, we, we love you too, brother. We appreciate you coming and um, you know, your friend to show you come back. You'll never have to answer that questions again because it's already been answered. <laughs> so whatever you want to talk about next time is fine. Um man, again, thank you for coming through. We appreciate you. This will probably be up in a couple days, first segment gotcha. or something like that. And I'll let you know as soon as it's out. Will do. Um, I guess can you give me just a quick uh matter of fact, can you just shout out the Godcast? Just be like Shout oh, out to is, the Godcast. This, this is, the is Umar Johnson and uh yeah, yeah. Dr. Umar Wait, hang on, Johnson. let me get that let me get this this okay. little thing off the fucking screen. Hold up. I got my TV on pause in there. I got I gotta rewind it back to go watch Kamala kick Mike Pence's ass. I'm sure she's gonna kick his ass. Ah, Should be entertaining. I give a fuck about that. All right, give us a shout out, dog. <laughs> Peace of yes, Black we... Power, this is the Prince. Peace of Black Power, this is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, and you're listening to the Godcast with Rod Digger, Lord Jamal, Brother Godfrey. Check out the Godcast. Dr. Umar supports it. Black Power. Bang, bang, bang. There it is, my brother. Thank you. All so right, y'all. Be blessed. Yes, sir. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Well, all right, y'all. Hey. We back. We back. We black. That was charged. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. We don't we not here to try to uh swoop down on people. 
you know that's but right at the same time we uh we're gonna you can you can make sure that the god cast is gonna ask the hard questions you know what i mean and um you know hopefully people be ready to answer but he answered now it's up to y'all y'all decide y'all y'all gotta decide for yourselves you know are you satisfied but the questions you wanted asked were answered well i mean were asked so need an l <sighs> after that miss loud throat oh i wasn't the loud one tonight <laughs> i was chill tonight. your throat was still loud girl you sure. gonna have to, we're gonna have to get a um a volume button on your throat um, I mean, I don't know. I gotta get my, I get you, my. You're gonna have to fix that thing for real, for real. I get, so it's, it's not, not just it's, a prop anymore. Like no, for, yeah, I was about to say it's like not even on. That's what but, I'm saying. Like maybe I don't know why I'm your so settings. Loud. Go into your, try your your system preferences right now, just real quick. Go okay. into them, right? Mm -hmm. Go to sound. Go to input, right? And then down where you see that mic, there should be a volume. Try to turn that down a little bit. Let's see. Input volume. Yo, 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 oh, yo, that's, yo. That's much yo, better. Yo, Thank yo, you. Yo, 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 that's yo, how you yo, turn yo. your throat down. Now talk, talk. Yeah, so what up, Jamar? Oh, come on. That's much better. Isn't that be everybody in the chat? Uh, <laughs> Could you tell us if if Rod Digger's mic sounds much better now? If I'm if I'm much better, you sound. Somebody said, "Yay!" Like you sound much better. Somebody said, "New Yorkers are some loud jacker asses." Ah, uh, she's from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Thank Shows you how much you much. know. Oh wait, let me get they said back. Much much better. Yeah. All right, so make sure that your shit stay like that right there. You dig? For the okay. next time. Okay. Um, I promise. I promise. Um, I will not see a thousand yeses. <laughs> I said, yes, it's better. Way better. Ooh. Oh, Wonder Boy says, what's up? There you go. Jersey just loud as fuck. Seller rods. Is that my man Wonder Girl right there? That's my man that I uh I be playing PUBG with on Xbox and shit. Shout out my man Wonder Boy. All my all my Xbox homies, Rabbi, WAP, Doc. <laughs> Hell, you're like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> Nigg niggas I ain't never met. Was I was I distorting before? I'm sorry. Yeah, you was. Now you sound like a now you sound like an angel. Okay. Now your voice is actually matching how you look on screen. Oh. Can't front dig it these last two. Not that you you know, you ain't always killing it, but these last two, the people said you killing it. Like you looking extra purdy. Oh, thank you guys. Purdy on these last ones. I I think it's my I think it's my new uh my new tresses. And I, I wanted to say actually no, we start small. <laughs> we we start with the three for five pack of braid hair, <laughs> and we work our way up to the bundles. <laughs> well, just jump in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. All right, y'all. Listen, everybody in the uh, super chat, we appreciate you. Let's see. Shout out to DJ Drama. DJ Drama again. Oh, man. DJ Drama had a, a lot of $4 joints. DJ Drama oh, again. Okay. Okay, wait. Here I go with the crazy news story. So I found a random story. Actually, this was terrible. So... A guy, um, his 21-month-old daughter died in the car 
because he when the i guess tow people and police people showed up he accidentally locked the baby in the car this this wasn't a situation where like he left the kid in the car he was like beefing with his girl and, and on some like flustered shit he accidentally locked the the baby in the car but but this is where it gets sad and tragic um he did not want to break the windows of his new car because he didn't have the money to get windows replaced. And when the insurance people were suggesting that they were going to send out a locksmith, he also declined that because he didn't have the money for it. And I was just reading this story like, damn, like, I know he didn't want his daughter to die. Like, it's like, how, how fucked up, you know, do you does it have to be for where like you got to decide like oh shit i'm gonna be fucked up if my car window get broken but my kids locked in there i mean it shouldn't be a choice but it's really fucked up like when that even has to like be a a thought I right mean, it's that's crazy yeah. well that just goes to show how much people value money you know what i mean value having shit like that you would really second guess something like that like i'm breaking all the windows immediately like 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 exactly you know, fuck like like but you know there's people out there that that really would um I'm like, you is know, it really a second guess themselves? Like, I was like, is it a new car? Like, no, don't touch my Mercedes Benz. Or was it like, damn, if the car if the car window breaks, I'm not gonna be able to drive my car, and I can't get to work, and I don't have the money. Like, I was trying to figure out. Wait, what this was a Mercedes Benz, you said? No, 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 no. I'm saying oh. I could see if it was like I don't want to fuck up my brand new Mercedes Benz, but I was trying. But if to... you got a brand new Mercedes, then you should have the money to fix no, a fucking I... broken window. So I don't think I, I was trying to figure out, like, based on, like, the context of the story was like he didn't have he couldn't afford the locksmith either. So it was like it was just I don't know. It just seemed fucked well, up. Well, well, like, well, if you can't afford that, you damn sure can't afford a funeral for your child. OK, so why the fuck are you even well, uh, oh. debating that shit? Like, like how much what's the most the fucking window could be? What's the most it could be? Five hundred dollars. I'm thinking three hundred dollars, but I just said five just to put a cushion on it. So you thought five hundred dollars was gonna fuck your life up? Like, are you that hard up for 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 bread that five hundred dollars I mean, was just gonna ruin your whole well, well, fucking well, existence? It should never. No, we. It, it. No amount of money. No amount of money should come before your kid. But I'm not. Well, she didn't to, die, did she? she no, okay? she died. She died. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She, she died. died? She died. What? She died. Oh wow! No, I just I I just read this story crushed because I I mean I'm not so I'm I'm not so detached from like the element. I know there are motherfuckers out there where three hundred dollars will fuck their lives up, but it's crazy that it cost a kid. It just I don't know. It's just the craziest story to read. What well, that to me is the is the is the psychological hold that you know money and all this shit has on people that you would actually second guess that to the point of the death of your child like that shit is crazy that's crazy wow damn why your throat couldn't always be this this volume Nigga, shut up. We had to figure this out at the end. Shut up, I'm oh, on. <laughs> oh, Harriet Throatman. Goodness. Throat. Throat on. <laughs> throat, 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 throat on. Throat on. Oh, man. Well, listen. You know. I guess uh, it's time to go. I got to get up in the morning because um i'm gonna interview uh dr boyce watkins at 11 a.m oh wow you're not ready for that are you 
at 11 a.m. Nah. <laughs> no. Nope. I'll handle that on my own. You got that uh, all on your own. I'm going to be in my bonnet. So, everybody, click that like button. Um, If you can, join us tomorrow Um, for Dr. Boyce Watkins. Now, I'm going to tell you all again, and I'm sure I'm going to get a thousand messages again. You're going to say, I went to the page, to your page to watch the interview with Dr. Umar, and all of a sudden, I, it went blank, and it's private. That's because I told y'all motherfuckers, who I, whom I love, but y'all still my motherfuckers, that um, y'all is like the live studio audience. So y'all get to see it live, but then boom, we take it off. Now, don't try to put it up somewhere else on the internet because you're going to get you a copyright strike and all that bullshit, and some other site found out the hard way by doing that you don't want to do that so just hang on this is the, we got a method to the madness we got to chop it up edit it make it look right how we want it to make it boom we're gonna shoot it out to you asap in those segments and then you're gonna get the full episode why do y'all do that why do y'all do that because this is some shit that y'all got to do to make your your channel pop to get the algorithms popping and all that type of shit there's a reason why your boy v lad is popping the way he's popping Okay, so we can't reinvent the wheel and all this type of shit. And for y'all motherfuckers that feel like, oh, I don't have a short intention span. Just pull the whole thing out for me personally. No. Okay. A lot of more, more people got short attention spans than you couple motherfuckers who got long attention spans. So, and it helps to monetize. Thank you, Kenny Russian, my guy. <laughs> and it helps the monetization of the channel by um it helps the monetization of the channel by um basically you get more bang for your buck instead of just putting out one video mm -hmm. so please stop hitting me in my comments and my dm talking about yeah we waiting on you kenny you, you got you got my my info and all that you got the personal um Ah, oh, this is terrible. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm all. I'm, I'm sorry. You I was got just, more I, bad news. No, no. I was just, I was just reading it. He was, he was arguing with the girlfriend, and he took the baby. Like, this is my child. I'm taking my child. And, ugh. Oh, this is a terrible story. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm. Like usually, it's the usually it's the 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 woman. Oh, like, hold up. My. Brother Ben X. Shout out to Brother Ben X. He said, keep up the good work. Hey. We'd love to connect soon. Come on, bro. You know we'd like to connect with you as well. Um, Man, I'm sure I'm following you on IG. Just hit me in the DM and we will, um, we will get together, bro. Because I definitely, you know, been checking you out for a while. Like your videos, I like what you're about, I like your show, I like your seriousness, I like the information that you bring to the people. Yeah, yeah. We gon we're gonna get Brother Ben X on the Godcast. Y'all heard it here first. Right. Y'all heard it here first. Oh man, we rocking. We, we rocking. rocking and rolling. I All don't know, man. People wanna be hey, on the Godcast. Umar send us today. <laughs> Umar send us. Nah. nah. <laughs> Never get Umar sends you. Now, Umar sends you. <laughs> now cipher. Now cipher. God don't get son. I asked what motherfuckers thought I wouldn't ask, and you know. I know my phone died. I actually i i couldn't see the uh, i couldn't see the um. At some point, I was missing the comments. I was trying to plug my phone up on the low so I can get back on the, uh, so I can get back on the chat. So listen, you know, whoever, you know what I mean? Like, don't think, cause they're like, yo, don't be like Charlemagne. Nah, I mean, you know, shout out to Charlemagne. He cool and all that, but you know, there's something different here. You know what I mean? We working for the people. 
We want to make sure that, you know, we got to vet our people. I'm sorry. We all need vetting. Y'all vet me too. You know what I mean? Like, we all need vetting. We had to vet Digger's throat. Needed to be turned down. Now we got, you know, her throat is good now. Um, But, you know, for instance, if we was to have somebody up here like a Jay Morrison, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's accusing this guy of, of you know, fraud and all that. You think I'm not going to ask him that? I'm going to just let him come up here and just talk about what he want to talk about? Now, Cypher. Now, Cypher. We got to ask the hard questions. So, at some point, now, 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 remember I said this. At some point, people are going to not want to come on here because they're going to know that we're going to ask them the hard questions. And if they don't come on, that should be an indicator to you that they have something to hide from the people. Oh, shit. If they don't come on, they probably have something that they trying to hide from the people and they don't want to be asked the hard questions. Anybody else would have no problem coming on. And, and 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 answering the hard questions if they about that that truth life you heard so that's all i'm saying what you feel about that dig am, am i am i right or left uh you're right but like i asked him and i asked you too is there a way f- for us to vet each other out of the eye of the the others I just feel like no, I just because feel- because right here this is this is even though we're on YouTube we this is as much as we're gonna get with ourselves in a group collective like this like this is a B one space put your B ones up right now everybody show digger that ain't no but ain't no white people really in here this is a B one space um so we're not trying to necessarily air out our differences in front of white people and all this type of stuff um. We're having conversations in our forums, you know, that need to be had, man. Like, I mean, like, I they can need to be had. I can unequivocally say anyone, any any person whose name has been mentioned in terms of, you know, being someone trying to make a change or doing something revolutionary, there is a whole smear campaign against every last one of them. So at what right. point and some and some some are some not may- some don't deserve it and some do. And we gotta find out who those are. Thank some, you, DJ Yo. Some don't deserve it and some do, but I think oftentimes we feed into it. I think I think oftentimes we feed into it. And I also feel like when we do that, uh the others sit back and say, oh, "Let them, let them tear each other down." Thank, thank you for doing our work for us. We don't have to discredit you. Let them discredit each other. Right. Well, I do feel like that's happening. I mean, I feel like that happens, but at the same time, you can't lump them all into the same thing. Some people need to be discredited, just like the brother said. Like you're not going to save everybody. Like, like some of these motherfuckers is, is going to get taken out on some, they're going against the revolution shit. Like, like that's just a fact. So you can't say that every single person that's being talked shit about that's supposed to be in a conscious community, you know, that might be getting called out that every single one of them is being called out um, like falsely because some of them might be being called out prop you know properly and so now we need to find out we need to find out are you being persecuted or is there is there validation to what's being said we need to find these things out 
this is what a vetting process is. You don't just let somebody get into the into the White House or any 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 what, job what if, what if, or whatever the case may be. We're what trying if, to go through if, a vetting in some process. Of these cases, what if in what if in some of these cases, what if it's both? What if it's yo, I'm 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 about to change the game and and get my people to the promised land, but I'm skimming off the top. Know that this this shit ain't easy. I'm skimming off the top. Yeah, well then they need to say that. They need so to say that, that because people, if I, I believe if people say that instead of acting all, you know, like they dodging shit, if they like, listen, no, nah, I'm getting donation, but I'm gonna let you know straight up. I'm living off this shit too. Like, like I, I got to eat. You know what I mean? Y'all gave me $750,000. You, you know, and I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying that he's saying this. I'm just saying mm -hmm. whatever the number is, y'all gave me a million dollars. You know what I mean? Don't think that I'm not taking a hundred thousand for myself to live. Like I, I, you know, if he's, mm -hmm. I think if a person said that, people would yeah. have more respect than if you was acting like no, every single dime is going towards, you know, uh, the 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 venture, blah 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 blah. And we obviously see that that's not the case. And then it just seems like, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I know like when I when fishy. I. Just when I when I submit my lyrics matter budgets, you know, when I'm doing my school programs, it's like, uh, yep, I, I'm getting all the materials. I'm gonna do all the things I need for these students, but I'm not getting on anybody's camera without my face done and my hair done. And right, you know, you need to know that you need to know there is a percentage that right. goes that's to gonna go people. towards that, right? Yeah, so towards the glam squad, right? You if know, you're fucking things. with me. Things of that nature, right? Well, for instance, I just got a, I just got a uh, 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 email from Amazon affiliates, right? So, so I became an Amazon affiliate uh, thanks to my man uh, Reverend Shock. Thank you, Reverend Shock, for putting me onto that. So, basically, being an Amazon affiliate, you can share links, and if you share a link and somebody clicks on it and buys some shit, basically, you'll get paid off of the sale. Um. Mm -hmm. So I actually had put a couple affiliate links in a couple of videos, but they said, I got an email saying that when you do that, you have to make it known that that's an affiliate link and that you're getting paid from that. They said that your, um, your customers and all that would appreciate it more. You see what I'm saying? Like if you're down low getting paid off these links, they think they're just buying something, but they don't know you're getting paid off it too that kind of takes away the trust, you know what I mean, of the people and all of that. Um, so yeah, you're supposed to put a little thing like hashtag paid ad or something like that, or you know what I mean, ad commission or some shit like that they were saying. And I just thought that was interesting because I think that's what people are looking for in certain oh, so, circumstances. So like, like if we're, when you see those advertisers on, um, on Instagram and stuff, it's like, hey, I just drank some tea, but you know, you you, you put paid ad, to let people know, yeah, I got paid to say this. Don't necessarily mean I drank this shit. And now I, this is how I look. Like, nah, right? Got, or 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 no? I, I, see, I, I, well, this is more. Well, I see. No, your your situation yeah. is different, but it's like the same. Yeah, I know what you're concept. saying. Yeah, it's like, like you're just letting love. people know, like, yeah, I'm not really just drinking this because I like it. This mm -hmm. is a paid ad, like, and you should right. let people know that, like. Right. And now, if they decide to fuck with it, it's not like you tricked them into think into it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when we talk about transparency, it's kind of stuff like that. Like, like, now you ain't got to know how much money I'm making off of um, Amazon affiliates. You see what I'm saying? Like, it ain't right. got to be that transparent, but. Right. The fact that I'm letting you know now, if you click that link and you buy something, I get a cut. You see what I'm saying? That's the type mm -hmm. of transparency that builds trust in people and makes people say, I, right, you know, mm -hmm. he kept it a hundred. So again, if motherfuckers do what you said and be like, yeah, I'm taking donations and you know, let's just say 5% of this is goes to me. You know what I mean? Like you're you're donating to me personally as well as the school. You see what I'm saying? You're or legally the, entitled the to twenty percent administrative fees. Hey, you know what I mean? Maybe people don't, don't need to know that. You know what I mean? I don't know, but all I'm saying is, 
um that type of transparency to the people i think goes a long way you know what i mean i agree and i think you know you know i think we sh we should be transparent to our community we should we should we should our we sh all community um we should be feel that we're trust worthy not just the ones that's giving us money we should we should be transparent to our community but we but at the same time we also cannot hold ourselves to a higher regard than we hold others because uh you know do other business entities that we do may do business with like are they you know now i have to you know now i have to uh mimic him for a minute like are they being transparent like are you know do do you know exactly how much if they if they tell you your nails cost fifty dollars but you know the, them some five dollar tips out of walgreens like what is that other forty five dollars i mean i'm just you know i'm just yeah well, well here's think. the thing when when you i mean if you become a stock in the stock market you know you become an investor you're supposed to get quarterly reports of your of what you've invested in you see what i'm saying that's the transparency did you that. you made you made a comment about you said there are there are donors saying that they're not uh because i mean he says he lets it be known right to here. his he says he lets it be known to his donors everybody else is just being nosy right but i'm i'm hearing you know i've heard otherwise you know but so i don't know right. you know what i mean i could just I mean, it, what I, what i've been told you know what I mean, and what and what right. he's told me tonight. What you know? So now this is this is why we have these conversations, and now you, the people, can decide. Da Shout out! This is Damon Calloway. I'm not sure if that's Dame Calloway. I don't think about the vaccine. What do we think? I I think I'm not taking nobody's vaccine, Damon. Mm. And I hope you don't either. And I hope you don't either. All right, well, Digger, let me get off here because I got to get up in the morning and prepare Word for our brother, okay, Doctor Boyce Watkins. Well, I don't know how soon this uh this segment is going to be up and running, but if you're going to be in the Columbus, Ohio area this weekend, I will be performing in Columbus, Ohio, uh, this Saturday, October tenth. Yeah, I'm on a roll this month. The next weekend, I'll be in Connecticut. And the following weekend, I'll be in Virginia. And then after that, I guess I'll just be back quarantined. But a lot of shows this month. Yay. All right. That's what's up. And uh, my throat's officially turned down now. <laughs> right. Even though I still want you to get that real mic hooked up so you're not I know. Uh, propping it. I don't like the prop because my mic still sounds super clean compared to what you're dealing with but at least your throat is turned down yes 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 <laughs> um listen thank you everybody once again that donated on the super chat uh we love y'all we appreciate y'all hopefully uh you know if you up in the morning and your boss you know you can sneak and watch you some youtube we'll we're gonna have dr boyce Watkins on tomorrow mm. so you know that's all about financial information you know that can uh i'm sure help us all where so let's check it out all right until then man we appreciate y'all once again thank y'all click that like button on the way out subscribe if this is your first time checking us out tell a friend to tell a friend the god cast is, oh yeah, it's um, me, little fame bump, uh, bumpy knuckles on that uh, new uh, granddaddy IU. Yes, we did that. Oh, that's what's up. That's yeah, what's yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to alive. my one family. Shout out to my mods. Um, shout out to AJ Stacks, aka Artie Stacks, aka King Arthur, aka. <laughs> I forget what the last one was. Oh, Artemis Stackimus or Artemis Stackington. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. All right, y'all. Damn, thank you, Cayenne Taylor. Appreciate you. Black mind and money muscle. Thank you. Somebody said, am I asleep? No, I'm not asleep. I'm looking down at my phone. Dr. Beavis, thank you. Trying to get debate updates since I was forced to film during the debate. Sorry, I'm corny. I, I want to watch the debates. Yeah. Rather than bring information to the people. Hmm. 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 See where her head's at. Hmm. Yeah, I'd rather watch the debates than, than get sunned by Umar <laughs> Ain't nobody gets sunned. What are you talking about? Why are you Jamar, Jamar got sunned, y'all. Scott, shout out to Scott and Scholars Press. It says, several new books available now on Amazon. Logged off. My Journey of Escaping the Social Media World. Second book, Mirrors and Reflections. And third, The Healing. All three books under my own publishing company. All right. Scott and Scholars Press. Go check his stuff out. Thank you for that. Watch your mouth, digger. Ain't nobody get sunned. <laughs> I okay. don't like that. Watch don't get your, <laughs> yeah. Watch your mouth. Like, wait a minute, see, wait a minute. See, see, it's people like you. It's instigators like you that start shit in the, in the community. You <laughs> Yo, see the, what he- the headlines tomorrow. Digger said yeah, man, Jamar got shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> wait, why you bullshit? And I, he, I guess he said he could see. That's who he was getting mad at. I think he was getting mad reading the comments. I'm looking at the comments. Y'all mm-hmm. was going in. Y'all wasn't being nice at all to oh, our guests. Yeah, I was just clicking a couple of them, but yeah. Fuck that. Mm-mm-mm. Well, listen. I'm out. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Y'all wish I had my little. I'm gonna be the sound effect person. Shots fired. Yeah, I got rid of that little shit. That shit is bullshit. Anyway, listen. We appreciate y'all once again for the United Mean Godcast. I am Lord Jamal. I'm Tika Tika. Peace. Peace. It, 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 it is.